Let's get more now on that diving trip on the Great Barrier Reef organised by the federal government for Canberra-based diplomats. It's all part of the government's efforts to keep the reef from being declared in danger. The government claims it was blindsided by a UNESCO report last month which said Australia hadn't done enough to protect the reef from the effects of climate change. Leslie Hughes is a Climate Council spokesperson and distinguished professor of biology at Macquarie University. She joins us now from Sydney. Good morning to you and welcome to News Breakfast. Good morning, Lisa. What do you think this uh, snorkelling diplomacy may achieve? Well, it's hard to say. Um, apparently, Warren Ench is taking about 16 ambassadors who all represent countries that sit on the UNESCO committee to Agincourt Reef off Port Douglas to show them presumably a nice patch of reef so that they'll all go home and then um, lobby their respective committee members to delay or um, not, not make the decision that the reef is in danger. Of course, the Great Barrier Reef is 2,300 kilometres long, and I'm sure it's quite easy to find nice patches of the reef that look pretty healthy, at least to the untrained eye. Um, but a one-off spot check of a bit of healthy coral does not mean that the reef is not in danger. They are taking marine scientists out with them um, and certainly experts who have a really good grasp of what's happening to the reef. So it, it's not just sort of a day splashing around in the water. Are you saying that you still don't think that they'll get the true story of what's happening? Well, I think that the UNESCO decision will hopefully be made on the basis of good science. And the Great Barrier Reef Marine Park Authority's last report in 2019 on the health outlook of the reef downgraded the reef's health outlook from poor to very poor. And that report was written by a great number of very, very good coral reef biologists. So once again, um, the, um, the jaunt out to the reef to see a nice patch of coral um, will perhaps do something. I hope that the UNESCO decision will be based on much more than that and on the totality of the science, and especially knowing that in the last five years, the Great Barrier Reef has bleached three times. So do you think that it is the right move for UNESCO to list it as in danger? I think if it gets listed in danger, it's simply um, stating the obvious. The reef is in danger. The climate change is the biggest threat. Burning of fossil fuels, um, which the government is not getting on top of, is causing the bleaching. Um, if UNESCO lists it as in danger, it is utterly consistent with all the science we know. Um, Paul Hardesty, who these, is the chief executive of the Australian Institute of Marine Science, I'm sure you're aware of his work, because he was writing just recently saying, look, Australia is actually leading the world when it comes to improving water quality. Yes, climate change is the biggest risk to the reef, but there is a whole lot of stuff that's being done already. Do you not think that is a signal of certainly some people in Australia trying to do what they can to keep the reef safe? And would that weigh into the decision by UNESCO? Look, I'm sure UNESCO will take that into account. And absolutely, I support any moves and any science and any action aimed at improving water quality, because that will help build the reef's resilience to other threats like climate change. But, you know, um, in one of the major bleaching events that we've had in the last five years, most of the bleaching occurred in the northern parts of the reef, which has the best water quality. And that pristine water quality was still not enough to prevent the devastating bleaching. So water quality is part of the issue. There are a great many people working to improve water quality, and that is fantastic. And the government is funding those initiatives, and I applaud that. But the government is not addressing the major threat to the reef, which is climate change. Yeah, it doesn't take much of a change in temperature to affect the coral. Leslie Hughes, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Thank you.